Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to the Society, Chairman, uh, members and guests. So I've been asked to talk about what, it, what will be the impact of these valves and, and to look at uh, the analysis of the, the, uh, the registries. And I'm going to give the answer at the beginning, really, before I start. These are the two contenders. There's Percival, uh, there's the uh, Edwards Intuity, and that is now the Edwards Intuity Elite. And actually, this is what matters. And to me, if you can tick all of these boxes, why would anybody want to suture a valve in again? Cost will be the only factor. So we're going to talk about ease of implantation, hemodynamics, durability, paravalve leak, and pacemaker rates. So let's start with Percival, and I'll do the, the, the two separately. There have been three major trials on Percival. Each one's got bigger. The studies have uh, extended for longer, and the valve sizes have increased during that time. Most of these are reported really in the last 18 months. So this is, uh, is the major one, the Cavalier trial from 2016. And we're looking here at one year outcomes after the valve. And what we see, and we see this throughout all of, uh, of, of the Percival trials, mean age 78. Patients over the age of 80, 40%. Highly symptomatic, so you'll see that very few are outside class 2 and 3. And their Euro score is 10. So for me, a lot of this Percival data comes from TAVI turndowns, from the sub-TAVI groups. This isn't a, a routine uh, AVR practice that I would see. In terms of the sample size, quite big. We've got 650 patients and a third of them are having uh, concomitant surgery. So of the isolated AVRs, you'll see that 33% in this series had an MIS approach. I'm going to keep coming back to that throughout. In terms of valve insertion time, it's really very quick. Full stenotomy is obviously quicker than mini stenotomy. That may be statistically significant, but I don't think it has any significance for the patient. Uh, in terms of results, mortality is, uh, is really where you would expect it to be uh, in this group of patients. Paravalve leak rates are really very low. Now when we started out with Percival, Donna Frio presented uh, in San Francisco 15.7% paravalve leak rates, and that was far too high. Um, but now, with Percival, they're reporting much lower rates. And the answer to why is in the text. And essentially, initially, people were simply taking out the leaflets, ignoring the annular cal calcification, and putting in this sutureless valve. And with time, you realize that actually, if you want a paravalve leak, it used to be called TAVI. It might be different now with, uh, with the later devices. But you have to make the annulus pliable, and you have to make it match the circular device that you're going to put into it. Into it. And so annular decalcification is a vital part of this technology. Structural valve deterioration is zero, but it's very short follow-up that we've got so far. But permanent pacemakers were significantly higher, I would say, than surgical series. The rates for Percival have been anywhere between about this, 6-7% and about 17%. Seems to have come down with time, and I'll come back to that in a while. But overall, slightly increase in, uh, in pacemaker rates is something that, uh, that bothers me here. Now this is the biggest trial that there's been. Um, they've put together all the patients from all these three studies. Uh, and this came out uh, late last year. And you'll see again, this is quite a high risk population. 765 patients now, 95% uh, valve success. But again, mean age 75, a lot of patients over the age of 80. Euroscore is even higher here, so the mean Euroscore is 10.9. So this is quite an elderly and comorbid population that we're talking about. What we find again, 25% mini AVR in the, whole, uh, in the whole group, and yet there are an awful lot of patients having uh, concomitant procedures. So that overall, we've now got 38.5% of patients having MIS surgery with sutureless devices. There's no compulsion to do MIS surgery. 
this is what evolved from this technology coming out. Cross clamp times, bypass times again, very acceptable, uh, lower than you'd expect for a surgical, uh, standard surgical population. And in terms of outcome, what we've got now is, is data going out to five years. And you can see 3.4% mortality rate with a low mortality rate each year. Explants, 1.4%. If you look down at paravalve leak rates, guess what you find? 1.4%. And I think the message is, these, these paravalve leaks do not occur late. They occur at, on the day of operation in theatre. If you miss them, if you ignore them, if you leave them, they will come back and the vast majority of patients will have to have uh, a re-operation because of this. And I think the biggest thing about these is you have to have good TOE in the operating room. AV block, overall 6%. So it's approaching what I would call a surgical series. Now whether that is that it's in the hands of, uh, of people who do it very well, whether it's that uh, techniques have matured with time, I don't know. But overall, the Percival pacemaker rates have come down. In terms of how they perform, are they better than the standard surgical valves that we use? And the answer is they are pretty damn good. If you look here, mean gradient for the entire group, uh, single figures. Doesn't change with time, doesn't go up over the five years that we're looking at. EOA, for the whole group, 1.5, 1.6, which is very acceptable. And if you look specifically at the 21 millimeter size, that's, uh, that's really quite good effective orifice areas. Been a recent paper out, which, which I haven't quoted in here, comparing uh, flow dynamics with Percival versus uh, other devices, sutured devices. And the Percival does come out extremely well in terms of hemodynamics. And LV mass, mass regression is very good, 250 down to the mid-high hundred uh, hundreds uh, in LV size. So it's performing well, its paravalve leak rates are now low, its pacemaker rates are dropping, although slightly higher than you'd expect perhaps in a surgical series. What about uh, intuitive? Well, there have been four major trials, three European and the US trial Transform, which I'll do on its own at the end. So what I'm going to talk about now are essentially the three European trials. Now they were all undertaken with generation one. Generation two, the elite, is a complete new ball game. It is a much more surgical friendly valve. I believe that whatever the results I'm going to show you now, the generation two elite will actually be much better. So the first study was Triton. That was CE marking study. It went on to develop into a full study of its own. The second one is what we called a real world study. It was 27 units from across Europe, 546 patients in the cohort. Uh, and this was just what each individual center wanted to do. The last one I will mention briefly. It's a small study, but it does have one or two points that I think are well worth making. I'm not going to go through each of the studies. They were all of them broadly in line. I will simply illustrate points using individual studies. So this is foundation. And what you see here is what I would call a typical AVR population. Mean age is, 65, is 75, log year score is seven. This is different and a lower risk population than we saw with the Percival. But again, if you look at the MIS approach, you'll see that it's really quite significant. For isolated, AVRs, it was 40% with Triton, 50% with Foundation. It was 50% in cadence because of uh, study design. And most of those, <coughs> most of them, were done through an upper hemistenotomy with a few right anterior cotomies thrown in. Now what this says to me is that this rapid deployment technology is actively encouraging minimal access surgery. Because everybody says, why should I be doing this operation? It's, it's just making my life more miserable. It's a low risk procedure. But I think when you add in rapid deployment technology, then it increases the proportion of patients who are suitable for a mini approach. But if you do ask me, 
Would I rather have a sutureless valve or a mini AVR? I'd take the mini AVR every time. So what they're doing is allowing me to have what I think is a better operation. In terms of outcome, mortality, where you'd expect it to be. The, uh, the morbidities, the reoperations, renal failure, again, where you'd expect them to be. And yet again, we see a low paravalvular leak rate, but those that leak tend to be explanted. It's exactly the same story again. These don't occur late, they get missed at the initial uh, time. And finally, uh, pacemakers. Now, pacemakers come in at sort of 4 or 5% throughout all of these series, which I think is pretty analogous to a standard surgical population. I'm going to come back to that in the Triton study, though, in a moment. Now, what about hemodynamics? You'll see that the mean gradients for all of these valves, apart from a 19, was in single figures. They seem to perform very well. And when you look at effective orifice areas, they seem better than the Perimount Magna valve, which is in there. And consistently, EOA of the 19s and the 21s are bigger than you would expect from other series using these same valves. The difference is the platform, not the valve. And the reason for it, I believe, is because the stent within this valve flares the LV outflow tract. And anything that you do to increase the LV outflow tract, I think, will, will decrease turbulent flow, will positively affect the continuity equation. So you get a better valve, better hemodynamics, for exactly the same size. And I strongly believe that, um, that the Intuity, the Intuity Elite, works extremely well the smaller the, uh, the route you're putting it into. Uh, what about symptoms? Well, you'll see here on the left, most patients are in class two, class three, but three months down the line in foundation, they were all back into class one and class two. Symptomatically, these people get very good results. Now, what about cadence? Cadence was too small a study for it to show anything clinically. There's only 50 in each arm, but the big thing about this was that if you drew um, the, the intuity sutureless valve, you got it through a minimal access approach. If you got the standard valve, you got a full stenotomy. And the only thing I think of note in this are the cross clamp times. So minimal access, cross clamp time, 41 minutes, full stenotomy, cross clamp time 54 minutes and this just goes to show that if you put rapid deployment technology into a minimal access setting you get big benefits because the classic increase in operative time that you'd expect through minimal access goes away and you actually get 12.7% uh, 24% saving which I think is somewhat irrelevant so what we've seen in all of this consistency is minimal access surgery increasing. The Gary Registry had 10% in 2010, that had gone up to 23% in 2013. Over the same time, the UK went from 5% to 8%, and I think it's uh, a bit over 10% now. And yet these studies, particularly foundation, 50% of patients are having uh, minimal access surgery, 38% with the Cavalier, and I'm coming to it now, but the latest US study has gone up as high as 60% mini AVR. No coercion. It's not part of any of the framework. This is volunt voluntarily done by the surgeons involved. So what about Transform? Transform has just been published. It's just out there to read now. This data is taken from the AATS where it was presented last year. So they've got the biggest intuity uh, volumes, 890 patients, and this is the only study that is principally based on the intuity elite. Now, in terms of outcomes, excellent. Mortality, morbidities, problems with it, very, very low indeed. The only negative fly in the ointment in all of this was pacemaker rates. And the pacemaker rates here came back at 14%, far higher than any of the European series, and very unexpected. 
<coughs> now, the first thing to say is that 22% of these pacemakers went in either on the day of the operation or on the next two days, which is not what would happen here. And at St. Thomas's, we'd be waiting at least 10 days before the inflammatory markers came down, before any EP uh, cardiologist would go near them. So there's a slight skew in that th this is quite an aggressive uh, approach to putting a pacemaker in. The second thing is that I discussed this at EACS with some of the investigators. And essentially, if you take two of the centres out, the pacemaker rate drops to 6.6%. The two centres in question, and nobody knows who they are, well, I certainly don't know who they are, but the, the two centres in question were putting in valves that were one size bigger than their surgical series previously. And what it says to me is that these people did not trust the technology. They were putting in supersized valves to make absolutely sure there wasn't a paravalve leak. And I think if you oversize these valves, if you oversize Percival, you will get central leaks. If you oversize these valves, the consequences will be that you will get pacemakers. They don't need oversizing. You need to trust the technology and put the right size valve in. So, this is where we started. Do we tick all these boxes? Ease of implantation. Absolutely yes. We've got short cross clamp times. We've got a massive increase in MIS surgery. These are very surgical friendly devices. <laughs> hemodynamics, yes. Both of them have better hemodynamics than sutured valves, particularly the Intuity, which is the same sutured valve that a lot of us are, are, are suturing in presently. Durability, I haven't said anything on durability, it's too soon. Percival is new, we'll only find out with time. The Intuity, on the other hand, is a valve that's been around for a long time and has some of the best durability data that there is, so I'd expect it to last. Paravalve leak rates are very low. They're in line with surgical sutured series and they pass that test. Pacemakers, I think Elite passes. Percival is slightly higher. I'm old enough <coughs> to remember the uh, life before the tea bag. My mother said it would never catch on. She said they were too expensive. I think ultimately we'll have the same experience with things like this. And that once the whole thing catches on, people will want it. People will no longer suture these, uh, these valves in and the price will come down accordingly. Above all, I think the biggest positive is that this goes with MIS surgery, and that's where the benefits are. Thank you very much. <laughs>